Uh, good afternoon, members of the media. Uh, today, I am joined uh, by His Excellency the Governor. I'm joined by also the Minister of Health, the Minister of National Security, and the Minister of Education. Uh, for today's media briefing, I will give an update on the latest COVID-19 test results, uh, matters dealing with uh, social distancing measures which have been put in place, a small update on the unemployment benefit. The Governor will be giving an update on the UK Government uh, through the Foreign and Commonwealth Office's uh, efforts to organize an air bridge to try to get students who are stranded in the United Kingdom back uh, to Bermuda, and the Minister of Education will provide uh, details on programs that have been put in place to help our students learn from home. After then, we will be able to take any questions which may uh, be needed for either uh, the Minister of Health, the Minister of National Security, His Excellency the Governor, and or the Minister of Education. I'll begin my remarks by speaking about the latest regarding testing. Today, the government of Bermuda received 30 additional test results um, from our aggressive program of COVID testing. Of these 30 test results, there are five more confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 25 of the results were negative for COVID-19. Three of the confirmed cases, uh, the three of the confirmed new cases were imported cases and two had close contact with a previously confirmed case. Out of the newly imported cases, um, they all arrived on British Airways flights, a British Airways flight on the 13th of March, the British Airways flight on the 15th of March, and the British Airways flight on the 17th of March. If you're on any of those British Airways flights, here is what you need to know. If you arrived on the flight on the 13th of March, your monitoring period ended on the 27th of March. If you have not had any symptoms, um, you are fine. Sorry, your monitoring period ended on the 27th of March. If you arrived on the 15th of March, your self-monitoring period ended yesterday on the 29th of March. And if you arrive on the 17th of March, your self-monitoring period ends tomorrow on the 31st of March. If you are feeling fine and have no symptoms, there is nothing for you to do except to remain in your house and continue to either observe the self-quarantine guidelines or the social distancing guidelines, which apply after your self-quarantine is over. If you have any respiratory symptoms, such as a cough or even a mild fever, please contact your doctor. Explain that you are on one of the aforementioned British Airways flights and that you would like medical guidance. Do not go to your doctor's office or the hospital. Please make sure that you call ahead. Now that we are at 27, uh, I could recognize that there is, uh, of course, a heightened sense of anxiety inside of the community. Here is what I will continue to say. Number one, that it is expected that we would have an increase in numbers. Here is what is key that there is no confirmed local transmission that has taken place at this time. Out of the cases, the total amount of cases of which we have, numbering 27 cases, we now, we now know that 17 of the 27 were imported, eight of those persons were close contact with um, <coughs> persons who were previously con confirmed cases, and there are two that remain under investigation. Now, I know there's questions regarding the two that remain under investigation. The epidemiology unit is trying to identify where this transmission may have happened. However, it is important to note that contact tracing has happened for close contacts of those particular persons. Those particular persons who are close contacts of the two people that are under investigation, those close contacts have all been quarantined. And to date, none of them have experienced any symptoms. So I think it's important for the public to know that just because the case is under investigation does not stop the epidemiology and surveillance unit from doing what it is that they are supposed to do, which is to track down cases. Out of the 27 confirmed cases that we have, it is 10 persons have fully recovered from uh, their COVID-19 infection, two remain hospitalized in stable condition, and the other 15 are currently active inside of their COVID 
um, infection. Um, most of them are at home uh, with mild symptoms, but there are two persons that do remain hospitalized. Unfortunately, due to the anonymity of uh, public health reporting, I come before you with numbers saying 27 and these particular things. But I want all of us to keep in mind that though COVID infections are generally mild, it must be understood that these are persons who are our friends and family. They are our coworkers. They are people who have family. And though some of them have recovered, there are some that are currently still undergoing the, um, the uh, effects of the virus. And I want us to keep their, them and their families in our thoughts and in our prayers. And I want to let them know, if they be watching from their home, that we are thinking about you. Thank you for making sure that you continue to take the precautions which are necessary to limit any possible spread of this particular virus. I hope that those of you in the hospital, your treatment is going well, and I hope those of you who are at home are recovering nicely. I will now just give a brief overview of the curfew items. I'm pleased to report that everything related to uh, the curfew uh, went well throughout the night, and the streets were generally clear. There were two persons who were stopped when they were seen walking just after midnight. There were two on-the-fly curfew exemptions that were given. One was an elderly couple. The male is a cancer patient and required KEMH attention and was driven to the hospital by his wife. The second had previously been a uh, hospital patient and needed to return and was being returned by a family member. Both passed through to the hospital without incident. You will note that there was a 5.30 a.m. burglary report at Coconut Rock and the culprits were quickly apprehended and are in custody. Eight Royal Bermuda Regiment personnel joined the police on their duties. Five were sounded in cars and three helped with foot patrols inside of the city of Hamilton. Uh, the curfew will continue for two more nights and it will be assessed to see whether or not that will, the cabinet will ask his governor to extend that curfew for a further period of three more nights. Regarding government quarantine facilities, a lot of persons have asked about those. There are currently 27 persons that are housed in a government monitored uh, quarantine facility. On the issue of self-quarantine, it is important to note that if you are on self-quarantine, you cannot leave your house and feel that you can quarantine inside of another residence. You must stay at home, separate yourself from others in your household, and if possible, use a separate bathroom and wash your hands often. You cannot let in visitors, share the common areas with members of your households, or you should not share utensils with members of your household. Being in quarantine does not mean that you have the virus, but what it means is that there is a possibility that you may have been exposed to the virus. And the most important thing to do is to monitor your health to make sure that you do not get symptoms. If you do get symptoms, the self-quarantine reduces the chance of you giving the coronavirus to the people which you live with. However, it is important to note that even if you have not developed symptoms, that does not mean that you are free and clear. Continue to maintain your quarantine because we have noted that some persons can pass on the infection before they become symptomatic. And if you pass that infection on, then that means that your entire house may be subject to stricter measures if you actually manage to develop an infection. It is important that you maintain your self-quarantine, and after your self-quarantine is up, you must still abide by the social distancing guidelines, because our job is to prevent the spread of this particular virus. There's been a question regarding the nine persons who breached self-quarantine. Those persons were found to breach self-quarantine upon further follow-up and police checks. I think there was a further follow-up today, and all persons were found accounted for, say one, uh, the Ministry of Health is going to be speaking um, with the uh, police to advance that particular matter uh, to see that that matter is dealt with appropriately underneath the law. There will be additional checks that will continue to pl take place throughout the week by not only the police but the Royal Bermuda Regiment, and we are urging all persons who are on self-quarantine to maintain their self-quarantine to make sure they protect the country and the people of Bermuda. Briefly on, on uh, unemployment benefits. There are 819 completed applications which have been submitted to the Department of Workforce Development. I must thank everyone who has worked around the clock to create this unemployment benefit system from scratch, test it and modify it to accommodate the needs of the applicants and the various government departments who are responsible for processing the applications and payments. 
Please note that once these applications are submitted, the workforce development staff must then review each application, including the supporting documentation, to properly vet them so they can be properly approved for payment. It should be noted that the first round of approved payments will be issued later this week. Again, the first round of approved payments will be issued later this week. For those persons who still need to complete a form, you can visit the website coronavirus.gov.bn or you can get a hard copy from the General Post Office. The current restriction on commercial aircraft operations is in place from two weeks, from the 21st of March until the 4th of April. However, commercial airlines have generally suspended their service to Bermuda for the month of April. The Cabinet will discuss the future uh, status of resuming uh, air, air, scheduled commercial airline traffic and it is too early to say what criteria may be established for a decision on reopening the airport. We are taking into account the persons who are still stranded overseas, who are looking to return home, and we're factoring all of those in our decision making. Please, however, note that we will not open the airport prematurely. Our healthcare professionals are focused on the immediate fight against COVID-19, and we are going to ensure that we take care and control any possible outbreak in this country first before we consider opening up our borders to commercial traffic. There are still a number of Bermudians that are stuck overseas, and as I had mentioned earlier, the governor will give an update on the United Kingdom's government's efforts to work with the overseas territories to provide an air bridge. The final item of which I will tackle today is the issue of the retail closures. On Sunday, we announced that retail closures would be in effect for seven days and will be reviewed um, following that seven-day period. That seven-day period expires tomorrow, and the Minister of Health has advised that that period will be extended for a further seven days. That means that the retail closures that were put in place for not only retail, personal care, and all those closure notices regarding churches, uh, community facilities, bars, dine-in, restaurants, etc., will be extended for a further seven days. It is important that we continue to track and trace any particular COVID infection that may exist in Bermuda to ensure that we have any particular outbreak under control before we begin to loosen any particular restrictions that exist in Bermuda. So with that, I will now turn the podium over to His Excellency, the Governor, who will give an update on the United Kingdom's effort dealing with uh, an air bridge in conjunction with the other overseas territories. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Premier. Let me start by paying my tribute to all those who are working so hard to tackle COVID-19 in Bermuda and doing everything possible to reduce its spread. I offer my particular thanks for the excellent work being carried out by all the island's medical, nursing and health professionals. And as Governor and Commander-in-Chief, I also thank the men and women of the Royal Bermuda Regiment and the Bermuda Police Service for all they are doing to support this island at this time, together with the other emergency services. At the request of the Premier and after consultation with the Opposition Leader, it was my responsibility under the Summary Offences Act 1926 to meet the order for the curfew which started last night. Like the Premier, I understand, including from the Commissioner of Police, that the curfew was generally well observed. I ask everyone to continue to respect the curfew and, of course, always to follow the advice of the Ministry of Health on practising good hygiene, staying at home during the daytime and practising social distancing. As mentioned at yesterday's press conference, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office recognises the importance of helping Bermudian students and others in the UK who want to get back home. So I am pleased to be able to confirm that the UK Minister for the Overseas Territories, Baroness Sugg, has today approved an air bridge flight between the UK and the overseas territories in this region. A British Airways charter flight will come from the UK to Bermuda and then go on to the Cayman Islands. Now, the precise timing of this flight is still to be confirmed, but it is likely to be in the first half of next week. That timing is designed to give sufficient time to allow the flight to be also supplied and loaded with cargo for Bermuda, including, I hope, with pharmaceuticals, 
which are normally sourced from the UK and which are not COVID-19 related but are essential to Bermuda. To help meet the costs, passengers will be asked to pay for their flight. We will be working quickly to agree the ticket price and the method for booking and payment and we will ensure that this information is provided as soon as possible. But to the extent that the cost of the flight cannot be met from individual ticket sales, the cost of the remaining shortfall will be met by the British Government. As the Premier has made clear, anyone who is brought back from the UK will not be allowed to self-quarantine, but rather will be required to stay in a Government-approved quarantine facility. That is a position which has my full support, helping to keep Bermuda safe throughout the quarantine period, while at the same time helping to bring people back to their families and loved ones. The importance of getting people back home is also one that I recognise from a personal perspective. One of my own daughters, who is an intensive care nurse in the National Health Service in the UK, was finally, only just this weekend, able to get back home from Kenya, where she was working. So I very much hope that we can deliver the same for young Bermudians and others who need to get back here. Finally, let me offer my continued support to the Government and people of Bermuda at this difficult time. Together, and despite all the challenges, I'm confident we will get through. Thank you. Thank you, AG. And now I will turn uh, the podium over to the Minister of Education, who has an update on the matters pertaining to the Ministry of Education and also the child care program that will be offered for children of essential workers. Minister. Good evening. I would first like to begin my update by first thanking our school leaders and staff for their hard work and efforts put forward during the past week in engaging our students and keeping our parents updated as we navigate through this COVID-19 situation. My update will focus on four areas, remote learning in our public schools during the past week, Cambridge checkpoint exams scheduled for April, the system transformation consultancy and child care for essential services workers. Let me start with remote learning. Our remote learning strategy included, but was not limited to the following options. Provide home learning packets, both hard and electronic. Using the teaching strategy's gold platform for posting activities at the preschool level. Using the Power School platform to post assignments. Using Zoom and any other on online programs such as Frog or Google Classroom for creating, distributing, and grading assignments and to facilitate interactive lessons. Using online learning applications such as Dreambox, Achieve 3000, Accelerated Learning, etc. Posting activities and information on school websites. And lastly, communicating with parents and students via email, phone calls, and apps such as Class Dojo. We provided options to schools in recognition that schools and staff need the flexibility to provide the remote learning activities for which they are equipped to execute at this time. This means the remote learning activities for students vary from school to school and teacher to teacher, with the curriculum being the common denominator. The Zoom application helped tremendously with the launch of our remote learning strategies. Training was provided in using this application as a remote conferencing tool for school principals, teachers, other school staff, Department of Education officers, and even parents and guardians. Last week, some of our school principals held staff meetings, assemblies, and even observed lessons using Zoom. Many of our teachers and other school staff use Zoom to conduct remote face-to-face -face lessons with our students and parents for both core and on-core classes. Many students uploaded videos of themselves completing their tasks, and our school staff has done an outstanding job communicating with parents via email, phone calls, and using apps such as Class Dojo. I experienced some of this firsthand as a parent, and I also had the opportunity to view many examples shared with me. I'm very encouraged of what was achieved during this first week, recognizing the technological challenges and the significant demands placed on educators and parents who are navigating their own home environments. I also extend my thanks to parents and the Department of Education staff for their efforts to support school leaders teachers and staff. 
Remote learning strategy is in its infancy stage, and we will be collecting quantitative and qualitative data from schools about the strengths and areas of the involvement for the strategy. This data will be used to enhance the strategy moving forward. This week, the Department of Education will begin reviewing the data from parent and staff technology and internet surveys. As of today, we have received 2,940 responses from parents and 391 from teachers. As per Plan 22, 2022 Strategy 5.3.3, we will use the data to determine the support needed for the remote learning program. We are aware that not all staff and students have access to devices and internet needed to support the remote learning strategy. The data from the surveys will help us gain a more accurate picture of the situation and determine the best way forward. Now I want to talk about our international examinations. Last week, the Department of Education sent a letter to parents via school principals informing them that Cambridge International has taken the decision not to run any of their examinations for May-June 2020 series. This includes the Cambridge checkpoints, the IGCSE, O-levels, and A-levels. I recognize this comes as a disappointment to our students and parents who have been working hard towards their exams. I want to reassure parents that the department will be working with Cambridge and other international examination boards to determine the best way forward for students. The Department of Education has also commenced discussion, discussions around end of year local examinations and senior school graduation. All efforts will be made to ensure that we put in place what will be best, what will be in the best interest for our students. School transformation. The Ministry and the Department of Education will be proceeding with plans for strategy and, and school redesign consultancy using remote communication strategies. The consultancy officially commenced on Wednesday, March 25th. Last week, the Ministry's local governance team met via Zoom meeting and held an initial collaboration meeting, calibration meeting to ascertain project management approaches and review the methodology proposed by the consultants. Another meeting is scheduled for tomorrow to finalize this. The governance team will interface with the consultants via Zoom for a first engagement session this week Thursday. They will discuss planning for interfacing and strategies moving forward. There is also Zoom meetings scheduled for tomorrow with the system design team and the consultants. This will be the first initial contact with this team for introductions and to map out protected times for working sessions meetings during the month of April. It is not our intent to delay the system redesign consultancy. We have high level of confidence in, the starting, in starting the consultancy using this approach as the consultants have previous experience working with countries on projects using remote platforms. We will be working diligently to keep the momentum going so the consultancy remains on schedule. The Ministry of Education is committed to school and system redesign and keeping the community updated on our progress. Child care for essential services workers. The Ministry and Department of Education has developed a child care program for children of essential workers aged 5 to 10 years old. There are, only, there are only a total of 68 children thus far. Two programs will be provided. The Community Youth Center on Angle Street will host the child care program for children 5 and 6, year old, six years old, currently 23 children in total. The program will start Wednesday, April 1st. Parents who submitted applications should have received an electronic link to provide the Department of Education with more detailed information, such as the name of person to collect children on a daily basis, emergency contact persons, details on food allergies, etc. Parents are also encouraged to submit these forms by noonday tomorrow, March 31st, or sooner. Cedar Bridge Academy will host a child care program for children 7 to 10 years old, currently 45 of them altogether. The start of this program is forthcoming and will be decided by the end of the week. Thank you. Thank you, Minister of Education. Thank you, Governor. Um, are there any questions for either myself or any of the ministers who are here? Thank you very much. Um, I think you mentioned there were two people who were found walking during the curfew hours last night. Um, can you give any information about whether there was any punishment or what's happened with them? Was it just advice given? Minister of National Security. Last evening, the two men that were out without excuse were stopped by the Bermuda Police Service. They went into one of the Bermuda uh, Police Service vehicles. One of the men uh, soon escaped from the vehicle and one of the men were taken to the police station. That matter is under active police investigation. Thank you. 
and maybe Brad brought you Mr Keynes um, with regards to the incident at Coconut Rock this morning. Um, anything further you can say about that, about what happened or what was taken from the... Uh, I cannot speak to what was taken as it is in an ongoing police investigation. A arrest was made and the culprits are now in police custody. And can you say anything about who, um, whether or not it was police or regiment officers or, or members of the public who realised that the break-in had taken place? I cannot. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, uh, Premier. I think probably um, we've heard a little bit about um, so far there's no evidence of community spread with regards to the virus. Um, with regards to some of the cases that came in before, for example, the March 17th clinic when the mandatory quarantine period started, um, how realistic is it then for people to, to think that that community spread may not happen if you know those people perhaps were out in the community without a quarantine? Do you want to take that? Hi, good afternoon. Um, as has been indicated by the Chief Medical Officer as well, um, we've said it here at this podium, that the uh, incubation period and the total period with respect to COVID-19 is 14 days. So in circumstances where a person does uh, present with perhaps a, perhaps a travel history, such as those individuals that have come into Bermuda from the 17th of March uh, until the last flight, then those persons are required to be quarantined for a 14-day period. And as the Premier indicated, I'm, I think 14 days from the 17th ends tomorrow, actually. So that 14-day period would be over. Any persons that came prior to that, we did have the testing facilities, albeit not on island at the time. We were testing through CARFA, which is a laboratory in Trinidad that services all of the Caribbean region, including Bermuda. So in circumstances where there were uh, issues where the medical um, physician thought that their uh, patient required testing because of their um, either travel history and or any other symptoms that we've discussed previously, then they would have been tested and that information would have been, that the test itself would have been sent to CARFA for examination. Um, as the Premier indicated, there is no evidence of community spread. We have 27 tests to date. Um, only a few of those, uh, that, I don't have the number in front of me, but the Premier indicated the majority of those were imported um, from various flights and then a few of those were contacts of persons that had been tested positive. Um, perhaps I don't know if, if I don't understand this, but isn't it the case that people may have been, I guess, spreading the virus prior to showing symptoms, at which point obviously the tests were going to clarify? Well, the testing, um, as again has been uh, discussed previously, not only by the CMO, but I think I've actually um, indicated as well, the testing, um, the evidence suggests that you test when a person is symptomatic. If a person doesn't have any symptoms, then a test could result in what's called a false negative. Mm -hmm. So if a person presents with symptoms, that's when, as well as the other issues that I spoke about, the tra relevant travel history and so forth, then that's when a test would be conducted. Mm -hmm. So it's only when a person is symptomatic do we um, test for the COVID-19. But can they be spreading it before that point? Uh, there, as Dr. Peekball has said, as well as I think Dr. Richmond, there's a, there, the overwhelming evidence supports that you cannot spread the disease unless you are symptomatic. Thank you. You are. Um, and it's another health question. Um, with regards to, I think the Premier mentioned last week um, about Public Health England and the extent to which they had, I guess, had discussions with yourselves. Um, I think there have been some pledges or promises of equipment or items coming over from them. I know the Governor mentioned this evening about some pharmaceutical items. Sort of items right. that weren't necessarily COVID related. Right. Are we any further forward on, on getting COVID related items from Public Health England? Um, I'm understanding that likes of Cayman Islands has had support with that regard. I believe they're waiting on a shipment at the moment. Um, is there anything to say you know, whether or not Bermuda might be in a similar position? Um, the supplies and resources that we've been able to acquire to date have either been through independent labs in the United States or through the Pan American Health Organization. Um, Public Health England has assisted insofar as uh, the testing facilities that we have in Bermuda and helping to validate those, but the supplies themselves and the testing equipment are coming from independent labs in the United States as well as through the Pan American Health Organization. In fact, PAHU is assisting us in um, uh, the, the, the latest shipment of testing which should be able to allow for between 450 and 500 persons to be tested. That was shipped yesterday. We're anticipating its arrival this evening at 7.30. It was shipped by FedEx. 
And any further forward there with Public Health England, I think the Premier said last week that um, you know, there was ongoing talks with them on a daily basis about whether or not we'd be receiving supplies from them. Those, those discussions do, are, are ongoing. Um, we have received support insofar as um, communications and, 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 and um, administrative support, but insofar as receipt of supplies, no, that hasn't been forthwith yet. Okay. And can you perhaps confirm as well, with regards to the testing kits that we have been using and the ones that are on their way, can you say um, if any of the, or where those have been manufactured, just with regards to there's been some controversy over certain um, manufacturing plants in China? I don't know if any of ours. Um, I don't know for certain. I believe they're being manufactured in the United States. However, I can say with certainty that the testing equipment that we're using here, the PCR 7500, it's a um, real-time PCR instrument that has been validated by CARFA. That's fine. Thank you very much. Okay. Further questions? We got strict instructions before we came in here to not touch the podium. Okay. <laughs> All right. With, with the two people that are still under investigation, um, can we rule out that they were on a plane then, that they came in, and that they were with a family member that um, had been near somebody who had been on a plane? This is why I invite the Minister of Health to these press conferences. Um, with respect to those uh, persons, as the Premier indicated, we are still doing what's called contact tracing. And contract tracing uh, requires a number of things. First and foremost, if a person tests positive, we test their family members. If a person lives within a house, if their um, household is very, very large, then there's a requirement to do quite an extensive amount of contact tracing. Following that, then they look at um, the, the next um, area would be their place of employment, as well as any other social activities or um, community events and so forth. So the contact tracing for those particular individuals is still ongoing. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so it's a, but we, then again, uh, just just to be clear, I'm sorry if I'm not, but um, mm -hmm. that um, they definitely weren't on a plane. It's definitely not somebody in their household. At this, at this point, I would rather say that the contact tracing is still ongoing, but it's safe to say that it was not with respect to imported cases, okay. as well as family members. And, um, Minister Rabain, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Rabain, how has this um, sort of been like a, a, a little bit moving to online learning, helping with um, fine tuning the 2022 plan? Um, part of um, the plan 2022, um, ironically, we were starting to look at how we could start doing more things online prior to COVID 19 hitting. So it's, it's, pretty, it's just accelerated where we wanted to take our system anyway. And so, but um, admittedly, it's some things have been put in place that there are some teachers that we're just not fully um, versed with. Um, there are some teachers that have challenges with their technology at home. There are some students that have cha challenges with their technology at home. As I said in the statement, we have conducted, um, this has um, allowed us to conduct a survey and see what exactly do we need to increase the resources and to ensure that all of our students get the same equitable of access to education that, that the rest of them are getting. I was just thinking like it might be a bit of a silver lining in this situation where we're actually getting to, to test out some things prior to full implementation. Well, I, I could say yes. We're, we're, getting, um, we're in a position where we're doing some things that we probably wouldn't have started to do um, for, for, what, for a while yet. But we are, we are doing it. And as I, um, sent, I sent out a letter of thank you to all of our educators this morning, I think they've done a tremendous job working with what they've had to work with over the last week and a half. Right. Thank you. Sure. Um, sorry, Minister of Health. Uh, the person that was uh, confirmed um, one of the people um, on the March 13th flight. So take us through the process of how that how that works till they're cleared. So I, okay. I know you've mentioned it's a 14-day period. Does that go from the test? Does that go from when they show symptoms? Okay. Remember, as I said previously to the reporter, they test when a person becomes symptomatic. If you test prior to them exhibiting any symptoms, there is an all likelihood that they will have what's recalled, referred to as a false negative. So once a person becomes symptomatic, so let's say they arrived on the 13th, they become symptomatic two days later, and they test on the third day. Epidemiology and surveillance receive that information from that day forward, then they start the contact tracing. But the 14 days is when the person no longer has symptoms, right? So let's say, and I think they said the period actually where you heightened uh, 
uh, symptoms are between three and five days. So it's not for the whole 14 days. So when you finish the period of having no further symptoms, three days later or 14 days, whichever is the longest, is when the quarantine, sorry, the isolation period, because once a person becomes symptomatic and they test positive, then they go into isolation. And that's when the isolation period would, would end. If that person was living in a household of, let's say, three people, those three people would be required to do quarantine as well by virtue of the fact that there's a positive person living within the household. And if those individuals become symptomatic, then they too will be required to isolate for a 14 day period or three days after the last symptom. So 14 days from when, when they, show, they stop showing symptoms is when they can get cleared. 14 day, it's three days after the last symptoms or 14 days, three days from the last symptom or 14, or 14 days from the test, whichever is the longest. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Um, Premier. Um, so, uh, just, to make, <clears throat> just for clarity, the person who would be on that March 13 flight with whom we received the results today, just as the minister said, 14 days from the test, they'll be in isolation for another 14 days. So another 14 days. Yes, it's right. whichever is longest, the 14 days or three days past symptoms. Okay, thank you very much. The, uh, just checking, when we had uh, people uh, repatriated from Canada and the United States, did they have to pay for their flights? Um, absolutely. They were not uh, done by the government. They were flown on WestJet or, the, or Delta or other airlines, absolutely. Okay. And then um, one uh, final question. Uh, with uh, people trying to get to buses on the, on the hospital, um, there were some problems today how um, people had to be um, picked up um, because the buses weren't working because some uh, um, yeah, dispute, yeah. So uh, what's the progress tonight? Um, I can't necessarily speak to that. I know that there were uh, 12 buses that were operated, 10 which were driven by uh, PCB drivers and two which were driven by uh, members of the Royal Bermuda Regiment. I'll look to get you that update. Um, it's a project that which we started yesterday and I'm sure that we'll be able to uh, maintain it. One of the most important things, and something which I stated before, is that um, at a point in time when the government and the country needs to continue to function, our public officers have a very important role uh, to play. And I've asked uh, public officers to do things um, outside of their job description. I've asked public officers to do things which are, are you know, modifying. If you're doing this, then you might be called to do something else. And I think this is a time for the public service to rise to the occasion, uh, to be the first line of defense, and to make sure that Bermuda in itself is um, able to continue to operate throughout this crisis. We have to recognize that there is going to be tremendous economic toll from uh, the shutdown, the effective shutdown of our tourism economy. We've seen what's happening around the world, with the challenges of which this is presenting. During this time is the most important time for the public service to live up to the expectations of which the public has for them and to continue to provide services. And I think that a vast majority of public officers are doing that, and I look for all public officers to come on board in this regard. We'll make sure that adequate precautions are taken in any way, shape, or form, but we have to make sure we continue delivering for the people of Bermuda. Thank you. Premier, can I ask you, you mentioned Rico Rodin. Is scientists. Last week, how soon is she coming? Because I'm hearing she is doing helping out uh, Nigeria online. Are we bringing her here to Bermuda to assist? Well, it's not a question of bringing. I'm thinking that Dr. Weldon may be on the UK Airbridge flight, mm -hmm. but um, Dr. Weldon was in touch with the Ministry of Health today. Dr. Weldon is in touch with me today. Um, I know Dr. Weldon uh, well, and the government has supported her particular efforts, and we're looking to continue uh, to use all resources, but Dr. Weldon is not the only uh, Bermudian doctor overseas that we're referring to um, in different things. There's been other doctors as well, so we're using the full, I would say, spread of the Bermudian diaspora to assist us um, in this um, endeavor, and uh, Dr. Weldon's helping in some instances, and there's other persons who are assisting in other occasions. But I'm grateful for um, her help, and I look forward to having her home as soon as possible. She's indicated that she wants to come home, uh, but it's likely that she will be coming uh, when the British Airways flight is arranged. It seems that about 80% of uh, those that have tested positive for the coronavirus have come out of uh, England. Mm -hmm. 
is this bringing more challenges, especially the flight to see uh, His Excellency just declared? I, I don't think it's coming gonna, in. I don't think it's going to bring more challenges, as the governor indicated, and the cabinet made a decision that for persons that are coming from the United Kingdom, where we know there is a wide uh, spread of this particular uh, virus uh, for that air bridge flight, just as in the other overseas territories, they'll be required to be in a government monitored uh, quarantine facility to reduce the risk of any further onward transmission. The last thing we would want is persons to be coming uh, from the United Kingdom to self-quarantine, to develop symptoms, and then to have additional persons that they become isolated, have additional persons that are quarantined, and then us having to do additional uh, contact tracing. So this is to keep a lid on the work that will happen inside of uh, public health. But I'm just going to, again, speak to this issue of our moral responsibility. There are Bermudians overseas that are running out of food and I am not going to leave them overseas to fend for themselves. We will bring them home. There have been many that have been writing to me on social media. Some persons are members of my family, and my heart goes out to those ones who are overseas. We will bring you home. We will make sure we keep the country safe. And I think that the government of Bermuda and the entire country of Bermuda can recognize that we should have the Bermudian students who were stranded due to no fault of their own home here so they can be with their families after their period of quarantine. School's out, so there's no need to stay over there. How many respir respirators do we have on the island? And if there's a wide uh, community room widespread, uh, what source will you have to, to gather more, to get more? Mr. Lindsay, you were here yesterday. I think that the chairman of the Bermuda Hospital's chief of staff answered that question. I'm going to ask you to refer back to his statements yesterday because he gave a fulsome um, explanation of the respirator capacity in the hospital, the fact that they've ordered additional respirators, the fact how they cleared out things, oh, sorry, ventilators, uh, different things. So, yes, yeah, so we, there is that particular uh, capacity that is there. With the airport, uh, uh, now everything is shut down. The deadline for um, the opening is going to be moved. Mm -hmm. Would this impact anything with, uh, has the coronavirus impacted that, that date? Um, as I said inside of my statement, the government um, has not made a decision as to when the airport is going to reopen. The current date is uh, for the 4th. That's when we close it down for a period of two weeks. The cabinet is meeting tomorrow, and we will consider um, decisions at that point in time. We'll be able to update after that. Um, how many rooms do you have uh, available for uh, isolated, um, I'm talking about hotel rooms, and um, do you intend on increasing those numbers if uh, these we, numbers continue to We work? have sufficient capacity to meet the needs which we have now, and we will have sufficient capacity for any United Kingdom students uh, who arrive back on island to be in that quarantine. You stated previously that uh, government hasn't shut down, so for those that are on financial assistance mm -hmm. within the month coming up, uh, to get food vouchers, is the system still in, in, in action? Absolutely it is. Uh, only is it still in action, but there was a call on a radio station earlier today. Uh, the hotline number is uh, working for financial assistance, not this hotline number, but the regular hotline number for financial assistance, and persons can go ahead and call uh, that number. Though the frontline offices close, as I said, government offices are closed, but the government has not stopped working. I need to ask um, the Minister of Education a question, and I'm going to declare my interest. I didn't hear you speak of uh, the younger uh, generation between one and five for uh, essential workers. Um, is there any consideration for essential workers and uh, a place for these little children to go, um, including my own? Um, Trevor, there was a survey that was sent out to all essential workers, to, and that is where we get our numbers from. Mm -hmm. And so that is what we that is what we can go by. So the numbers wasn't large enough to assist. Well, I'm saying that uh, we sent out a survey to say who wants these services, who would like these services, and that's the number that came back from that survey that was sent out to essential um, to the essential workers. I, I can't comment beyond that, mm -hmm. um, beyond that, because that that's what I've been told was it came it come back. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Okay, yes, sorry, just one more. Um, with the increasing numbers of positive cases, which I know has been expected, um, do you anticipate in the short term any move towards a 24-hour curfew for the island? We're going to make any of those particular decisions based upon the evidence on the ground. 
Um, and the and as I've said on numerous cases and points, at if any point in time we get to the place where we have uh, community transmission, um, then we will go ahead and we will make uh, those uh, decisions at that point in time. We are not at that point in time yet. Um, we are confident that we have um, a aggressive testing regime with the fact that the minister had indicated that the additional capacity for additional 400 tests um, arriving on island tonight will be cleared. Uh, there's additional tests that were collected. There's a number of pending. Those will be run tomorrow and the next day. And we're going to continue to uh, test and isolate, which is the recommendation of the World Health Organization. Um, we are reminding persons in the community to um, be uh, personally responsible to make sure that if they do have a minor fever or a sore throat, do not go out to work, just stay at home. These are the most important things to do that will stop and mitigate any community spread. But the fact is that this is an incredibly contagious virus. Our job is to make sure that we minimize community spread. That is what we have done with our extremely aggressive social distancing measures. And I sincerely hope that we will not have to go to the next level, which will cause even more economic pain than the economic pain which has already been caused by the virus transmission uh, to date. That is where we are. But we're going to take those decisions based upon the evidence and the science. At this point in time, there is no verified community spread. The epidemiologists have extra resources there. They are continuing to work through all these various chains. With our increased testing capacity, we should be able to contain. But if at any point in time that we are not able to, and remember, we're dealing with largely imported cases and uh, close contacts of imported cases. That's what we are mostly dealing with here. And if we then get to another place, an instance where it gets further, we will not hesitate to make uh, those particular decisions. But right now, we are not there. Right now, we are doing a decent job managing where we are. We are comparing the numbers of confirmed cases that we have versus what uh, the various trend lines in other countries um, have looked like when they've been dealing with these particular viruses. And we are comfortable with where we are. Um, but the fact is, we have to remember that this is a very contagious virus, and the expectations are that, you know, 50 percent of persons of Bermuda at one point in time will contract it. We just want to make sure that 50 percent of people don't contract it over the next four or five weeks before we have the ability to effectively treat and to contain. So this is all about that whole issue of flattening the curve. This is all about making sure that our health care system is not overwhelmed. But as the Minister of Health has said on numerous occasions, this is a uh, marathon and not a sprint. And her uh, persons inside the ministry have been working uh, for the last 12 weeks now on uh, this particular um, issue. And I'm confident that the preparations of which Bermuda has made has stood us in very good stead. Seeing that there's no further questions, I just want to thank everyone for their attention. I want to thank our frontline officers who continue to work hard, the public officers, those persons at the hospital, the nursing workers, everyone throughout the country. Um, and I hope that all of us will keep uh, the will keep the uh, those persons who have contracted uh, this virus, who are currently recovering at home or in the hospital, in their particular thoughts and in their prayers and in their families. Bermuda will get through this if we do all of what we have to do together, and I'm confident that we are actually, most of us, the vast majority of Bermudians are taking this seriously and taking the proper precautions. Thank you.